When you hear the word airplane, you probably think of a metal hunk that looks something like this. No, the other metal hunk. Or you might be picturing something like this. But in reality, airplanes come in all shapes and sizes, and today I'm going to show you 20 that are more on the unique end of the spectrum. Now these planes might look very bizarre to you, and you might even doubt if they could get off the ground, but they also have some fascinating stories behind them. Over the last century, as the field of aerodynamics was still relatively unknown and uncharted territory, engineers had no option but to build these bizarre looking planes to test out the waters and the principles of flight. And some of the discoveries that these planes have led to have actually inspired the designs of many of the iconic aircrafts today. So if you're ready to take a deep dive into 20 of these bizarre looking aircrafts and the stories behind them, and also along the way hear me butcher a lot of plane names, then let's get started. This video was brought to you by Curiosity Stream. Get access to thousands of documentaries and access to my streaming service, Nebula, by clicking the link in the description. Number one is the Aerodyne. The Aerodyne is a vertical takeoff and landing, or VTOL, unmanned aircraft that was designed by a German aerospace engineer by the name of Alexander Lippich. He wanted to prove that wings actually weren't crucial to flight and the generation of lifts, so instead he used flaps located at the back of the engines to redirect exhaust in different directions to create a combination of thrust and lift. And he was successful in building this initial prototype, and he intended the plane to serve as a reconnaissance drone. But soon afterwards, the German Air Force lost interest and the program was cancelled. Number two is the Avro car. Now don't be fooled, this is not a UFO, it's the Avro car. Sit down. No. The Avro car was a Canadian vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that was originally designed to be a fighter aircraft, but while well, it might come as a surprise to you, but the shape didn't really lend itself to dogfighting. The idea of the plane actually came from its engines, which used a turbine similar to a centrifugal fan and expelled the exhaust around the outside rim. And the end shape of the engine resembled a pancake, and so engineers must have thought, well, this is our one opportunity to make a flying saucer. Unfortunately, the plane in flight was found to be too unstable and difficult to control, and hence, shortly afterwards, the program was cancelled. Number 3 is the NASA AD-1. The engineers at NASA had a hypothesis that slanted wings at the speed above Mach 1 would have better aerodynamic properties than traditional wings. They believed that if an aircraft could pivot its wings after it reached Mach 1, it would greatly reduce drag, which could increase its speed and also its range. And below Mach 1, the wings could pivot back to become perpendicular to maximize the production of lifts. So NASA collaborated with Boeing and a Rutan factory to test out these theories in real life, and built a prototype called the NASA AD-1. So was their hypothesis true? Well, the results were inconclusive, because the engineers found that the plastic and carbon glass frame that the aircraft was made out of actually affected its performance and control, but they thought that the concept itself may still be viable for larger transport aircraft. Number 4 is the Eurocopter X cubed. The Eurocopter X cubed is an experimental compound helicopter, meaning it has both a main rotor and also propellers. Now, the two propellers actually create different amounts of thrust to counteract the torque that's created by the main rotors. This is a role that's typically filled by a tail rotor on conventional helicopters. The X cubed was created as an experimental high speed helicopter. Now, on a lot of conventional helicopters, their performance is actually limited by the rotational speeds of the rotor blades. The faster that they travel, closer to the speed of sound, they actually end up generating more and more drag. Hence, with the addition of shortened wings on the X-Cube that accounted for 40 to 80% of the lift production, they were able to slow down the rotors to avoid this and increase performance. Number 5 is the Nemeth Parasol. Another aircraft that challenged the notion of the traditional shape of wings was the Nemeth Parasol, a circular winged vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. And during the Parasol's first flight, its inventor and pilot Stephen Nemeth actually ended up stalling the plane. But the circular wing acted almost as a parachute and brought the plane down gently to a landing. So who knows, maybe this can even serve as future designs to a spacecraft. Number 6 is the Vought 173 Flying Pancake. The Flying Pancake was an experimental prototype developed by the US Navy to test the flight characteristics of a disc wing. And to everyone's surprise, it performed well. Because the plane didn't have traditional wings, it also had very little induced drag, which is usually created by vortices at the end of wingtips. 
Also, this flying wing structure was incredibly strong. In fact, when one pilot braked too hard on landing, causing the aircraft to flip over, it actually barely made a scratch. And at one point in history, this plane was also flown by Charles Lindbergh. Number seven is the Northrop Passet Blue. The Tacit Blue was an experimental reconnaissance aircraft that was also intended for low-level flights and high survivability. It was actually the very first stealth aircraft to have curved surfaces to minimize its radar cross-section, and this principle was later applied to develop the B-2 Spirits. The Blue was eventually nicknamed the Whale after its shape, and it was actually so unstable and difficult to fly that the chief scientist at Northrop actually described the plane as the most unstable plane man has ever flown. Number eight is the Straddle Launch. The Straddle Launch is designed as an aerial rocket launcher and was the widest plane to ever have flown, with a wingspan of 117 meters. To save development costs, many of its parts actually came from the Boeing 747, like its engines, landing gear, and the flight deck. Because of its large size, the Strahla launch requires a minimum runway length of at least 3,700 meters. That is about 30% longer than the typical jumbo jets, and also is about the entire length of the runway at London's Heathrow or JFK. Number nine is the Sikorsky X-Wing. The X-Wing was designed as a hybrid between a helicopter and a fixed-wing aircraft. The X-Wing that was on top of the plane would serve as a helicopter rotor to help the plane take off vertically, like a helicopter, and once in mid-flight, it would stop spinning to act as additional wings. Now, unfortunately, the plane never got off the ground before the entire program was cancelled. Number 10 is the Hughes H-4 Hercules, also known as the Spruce Goose. The Hercules was a transatlantic transport flying boat that was used to transport troops and supplies during World War II, and is actually the second widest plane in the world even today. The Hercules was designed to carry an extremely large payload, including 750 fully equipped troops or two armored tanks. Now, in order to minimize weight, the aircraft itself was made almost entirely of wood, and on its first and only flight, it flew for around 30 seconds over the distance of one mile, and was unfortunately shortly retired afterwards. And number 11 is the Lockheed Martin P-791. The P-791 is called a hybrid airship because it relies both on traditional aerodynamic lifts and also aerostatic lifts. So in other words, it operates both like an airplane and also a hot air balloon. It was initially developed by Lockheed Martin to be a very long endurance intelligence vehicle that was capable of staying in the air for up to a couple of weeks, but had lost that bit to Northrop Grumman's HAV-3. So eventually this airship was modified to carry civilian cargo. Number 12 is the McDonnell XF-85 Goblin. The Goblin was what was called a parasite fighter, and yes, you heard that correctly. It was designed to deploy from the bomb base of a B-36 Peacemaker bomber aircraft during World War II. This was in order to combine the long range of bomber aircraft with the agility of interceptors. But after two prototypes were built and tested, it became very clear that these were no match for the enemy fighter aircraft that they were going to encounter, and they also had difficulty docking. So unfortunately, the Goblins never entered into service. Number Number 13 is the Goodyear Inflato Plane. If at any point you thought the Goodyear blimp was bizarre, you should meet the Inflato Plane. Yep, you heard that right. This was an inflatable airplane that could be packed into a small package that was dropped behind enemy lines. So the idea was that downed pilots could then fly these back home to safety, a DIY rescue of sorts. Also, the idea was that rubber airplanes in the event of a crash would serve as more of a cushion as opposed to disintegrating on contact like metal airplanes. And if you're curious, an engine-driven an air compressor was used to keep the plane inflated, so thankfully, enormous lung capacity was not a pilot requirement. Number 14 is the Caspian Sea Monster Ikranoplan. The Sea Monster, developed by the Soviet Union, was an experimental prototype aircraft to test the theories of a ground effect vehicle, which are planes that hovered a few meters off the ground to experience reduced drag. Now, the Sea Monster was a transport aircraft that was designed to carry supplies over the Caspian Sea, and in fact, it was the largest aircraft in the world for 22 years after it was produced. But unfortunately, after almost 15 years of service, the plane was damaged and sank. Number 15 is the Edgley Optica. 
The Edgley Optica is a British light aircraft that was designed for low-speed surveillance. The Optica is able to combine both the low-speed maneuverability of a helicopter with the longer range of a plane. In the flight deck, there is a 270-degree view for the pilot and its two passengers. It is also exceptionally quiet because of the ducted fan that's attached to the engines. Now, this aircraft is actually still in operation today, so who knows, we might be seeing more of it in the future. Number 16 is the Solar Impulse 1 and 2. Now the two Solar Impulse planes are breaking modern records left and right and for a good cause too. The two planes aim to circumnavigate the Earth using only solar energy. And the Solar Impulse 2 did this successfully back in 2016 after spending 14 months and 550 hours in the air, all without using a single drop of fuel. Now to achieve this, the plane actually needed to have a very large area to one generate lift, but more importantly, to place the solar panels, but also needed to be extremely light. So for this reason, the Solar Impulse 2 actually had a wingspan wider than the Boeing 747, but was no heavier than a typical car. Number 17 is the Gossamer Albatross. The Albatross is a human-powered aircraft that had its pilot's pedals connected to the plane's propellers to drive it forward. As you can imagine, this required a tremendous amount of effort from the pilots. The plane required around 300 watts of power to sustain flight even in very still air, and this quickly increased with even the slightest turbulence or wind. But despite this, an amateur cyclist and pilot by the name of Brian Allen actually successfully crossed the English Channel using an Albatross, and that was done in in two hours and 54 minutes. Number 18 is NASA's Super Guppy. The Super Guppy really took go big or go home to a whole new level. Its predecessor was named the Pregnant Guppy and was made from two straddle cruisers that were fused together and extended for length. Eventually, NASA loved this plane so much they decided to make another pressurized version of it named the Super Guppy, and this was a Frankenstein of a plane using engines from the P-3 Orion, propellers from the C-130 Hercules, and a nose wheel from the Boeing 707. Some of the Super Guppy's equally bizarre looking cousins include the Boeing Dreamlifter and the Airbus Beluga XL. Number 19 is the Kalinin K7. The Kalinin K7 was a Soviet heavy bomber aircraft. It was basically configured as a flying tank during World War I. The K7 was actually one of the largest aircrafts in the world before the jet age. It was capable of carrying 117 fully equipped paratroopers. And not only did it look like a tank, but it actually included six tractor engines in the front of the plane and one engine in the back of the plane. It required a crew of 11 to operate. And last but not least, number 20 is the Scaled Composite Proteus. The Model 281 Proteus was another brainchild of the genius of Burt Brutan. It was actually designed with one single goal in mind, and that was to stay in the air for as long as possible. The plane is so efficient, it's capable of staying in the air for up to 19 hours, and actually has attachable wingtips to help increase its performance as well. And on top of that, the Proteus is even capable of reaching an impressive altitude of 63,000 feet. So there you have it, 20 bizarre looking planes and the stories behind them. Now, admittedly, I really have a soft spot for the underdogs, so I'm really happy to have shared their stories with you guys today. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for new content. Now, unfortunately, there are hundreds and thousands of planes out there that I couldn't get to in this video, but a great place to learn more about them is on CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream has thousands of documentaries and TV series on everything from from true crime to astrophysics. Lately, I've been especially into a documentary called Winston Churchill, A Giant in the Century. It really has some awesome storytelling on his life and legacy. So in addition to giving you guys 26% off, CuriosityStream has also teamed up with a streaming platform I recently joined called Nebula. You'll get free access when you sign up for CuriosityStream. Nebula is a platform made by educational creators where we can experiment with our content without having to worry about demonetization or the algorithm. So there. I'm joined by dozens of other females in STEM and also fellow aviation creators like Real Engineering and Wendover Productions. For less than $15 a year, you can have access to all of this awesome content. So if that sounds good to you, feel free to check out the link in the description. Lastly, thanks for sticking through this entire video. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and I'll see you next time.